All right, in this video, we're going to look at the temporary working capital versus permanent working capital for a Home Depot, and then I want to contrast that with Walmart. All right, so the idea of, of permanent versus uh, non-permanent or temporary net operating working capital really boils down to looking at over the course of a year, and I have two years' worth of quarterly data here for Home Depot. And if we look at the current assets, that's the stuff that has to be funded with either equity or current liability. So assets are what you own, the liabilities and equity are where you got the money. If we look at the assets, or let's look at inventory, it makes more sense. With inventory, about $12.3 billion down to $11 billion, $12.5 billion, $11 billion. The next year, $13 billion down to $12, $13 billion down to $5. So Home Depot, if we were to, to graph their inventory, they have the second and fourth quarter, they tend to have more inventory, and the first and the third, they tend to have less. But they always have some. They never do run out of inventory. If we look at receivables, these are the two big ones in here. They don't have as much of a pattern, but they do have some pattern here as well. We see in this year higher here than here, but it isn't as clear cut as with the other one. And then some of the other ones like with cash, as it moves up and down during the year. You have to have a certain amount of cash but not all of it's actually being worked in the business. Okay, so if we go and take all of our current assets and then stack them on top of one another, we can see that there's higher and lower amounts at different times of the year, but that the pattern in them changes a little bit. All right, now some of those are spontaneous because revenue goes up and down during the year. Uh, and you stock up, say, in the third quarter, that might be where you're adding inventory for the late fall and, and or Christmas season. And you see a big jump in the quarter one of inventory as people get ready to it for spring planning and things like that. So you try to reason out why it's there, but really we're just accepting that there is some seasonality in the numbers. And we're also going to see seasonality down here in the numbers for uh, current liabilities. All right, the current liabilities ought to somewhat track the inventory because that's what you buy inventory with is accounts payable. But we don't see the same pattern, all right? High, low, 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 high, low, low, low. So a different pattern in those numbers. In any event, if we took all the spontaneous liabilities, oh, I did want to mention deferred revenues. Uh, deferred revenues are the uh, uh, prepaid things like gift cards. Uh, my mother-in-law gives me a gift card from Lowe's every year, and it is a liability for Lowe's uh, and an asset. They got cash. They got the 50 bucks cash that she gave them to buy the card, and so they record that as an asset. And then it's also a liability. It's deferred revenues. They know that that some they're not going to recognize it as income until sometime in the future. But it's hanging out there that I can go hang hand them this card and take fifty dollars worth of stuff out of the building. All right. So without getting into so much on what's in these things, what we can do is look at what the spontaneous liabilities, the ones that go up and down automatically with different level of activity and compare that to the working capital, the things that go up and down without the company having to make a conscious decision, and the spontaneous assets, working capital, spontaneous liabilities. If we net them out, that's the assets minus the liabilities. That's how much has to be funded with other than spontaneous liabilities. It means you have to have some long-term debt or equity in there. That's because you always have some level of inventory. 
while it's a temporary asset, it never goes to zero. It goes up and down during the year, but really when you look at it up here in, in calendar year 2016, the lowest it ever got was $12 billion three. That means that that's, there's always going to be $12 billion of, of inventory there. That's permanent. And it goes up higher in quarter one and quarter three temporarily, and then it gets sold off. So if I look at the net operating working capital for each year and then look for the lowest amount, the lowest amount is quarter one, all right, in both years. So if I assume that $4 billion is the lowest, and again, $3.9 billion, that ain't much difference here. So when we're looking at this year, the lowest that the, the, the net operating working capital gets is $4 billion. That's the permanent part should be funded with long-term assets. And then it's higher in some of the quarters than others. And that's the temporary part. So you want to arrange some kind of temporary uh, funding for the temporary part and long-term funding for the long-term part. All right, so Home Depot sort of fits the model on what we're looking at. Let's flip over here to Lowe's, and I have the same numbers. They have different stuff in their, in their portfolio here. But if we go and look at the working capital, the spontaneous assets, cash receivable, inventory, and prepaid, notice that the spontaneous liabilities, accounts payable, taxes payable, accrued liabilities, that's essentially salaries for the workers, they're higher than the working capital. It means that Walmart has more of these spontaneous temporary liabilities than they have of the spontaneous assets. So when your net operating working capital is negative, essentially what that means is that these spontaneous liabilities are help they fully fund all the spontaneous assets and then some. And the excess can be used to fund things like your buildings. All right. So uh, that's what we would call more or less an aggressive uh, 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 working capital policy. But that's okay. They're Walmart. They can get away with it. This might be risky for a smaller company, but it's not really that risky for Walmart uh, given the, the structure of their business. But you can see that there's a vast difference between Walmart. Even in, in calendar year 2015, two of those periods were negative. All right, these were not negative, but that's just, you know, that maybe that's a, an oddity of stuff. That number's really high temporarily, and that number's temporarily high here. So in, in any event, what we see is Walmart it has an excess of, of spontaneous liabilities relative to the spontaneous assets. But what we want to pay attention to and what we were discussing with small businesses, this is more the pattern. The, uh, the pattern is typically you have some level of permanent and then some positive level of temporary. And you would tend to fund this temporary need for net operating working capital through short-term short lending like bank loans, notes payable, or uh, uh, a line of credit.